Good afternoon and welcome back. Here we are in our third Fed series. My name is Bill Addis, president and owner of Amherst Financial Training, and we've been providing these series of YouTubes to educate you, the investing public, on issues that are critical in today's market, and that topic being the Fed. Right? Interest rates, are at what the central bank is doing, what the Fed is doing, is unprecedented. And we're going to spend a few minutes talking about it. Now, when we talk about monetary policy, that's when the Fed is interceding to affect the economy, interest rates, and quite frankly, where we are today is literally and virtually unprecedented. So let's talk about that. Starting with the pandemic, our Fed reintroduced a concept that they had introduced back in 2008 in the Great Recession called quantitative easing, QE. And you've all heard about it, right? And under QE, what our central bank made the decision to do was to create over $4 trillion of new cash. Please understand, cash in circulation in the U.S. economy is not a function of our government. It's a function of the Fed. And with, that, with, their, with their understanding of where we were going, our Fed, that FOMC committee we've talked about, made the decision to create over $4 trillion of new cash during the pandemic. And with that new cash, they went out and bought bonds. And in doing so, they drove up the price of bonds and down the yield. Quantitative easing is all about yield curve manipulation. They were trying to bring down interest rates, and they did. Well, here we are coming out of the pandemic, hopefully, and the Fed has decided, because inflation pressures are growing, the Fed has decided it's now time to reverse that, to literally start destroying money. And on the May FOMC meeting, our Fed announced next month, June of 2022, they're going to start destroying $30 billion a month of cash. And by three months, they'll have increased that to $90 billion in cash. Literally, the Fed is proactively, intentionally trying to pull money out of the U.S. economy because inflation has reared its ugly head. We are dealing with inflation rates here in the U.S. that we haven't seen in 40 years. And the Fed has now acknowledged, hey, maybe this isn't transitory. Maybe this is a problem we have to address. And they're going to start tapering. This destruction of money that I'm talking about is referred to as quantitative tapering. It's the opposite of quantitative easing when they printed all that money and put it into the economy. But please understand, the markets are worried about this the equity markets, the currency markets, because many people feel that all of this liquidity, all of this money the Fed has dumped into the economy has created bubbles. And I'm not here to have that conversation, but many people feel the stock market might be in a bubble. Bond market, Bitcoin and crypto, real estate, many people feel all of them have been subject to kind of inflationary spiral pressures as a result of all this cash the Fed has just dumped into our economy. That this is the adrenaline that's been feeding all this market speculation. And now the Fed has announced they're going to cut off that adrenaline. They're not going to be not only printing, they're also going to be starting to destroy it. And that's what QT is all about. And that affects long-term interest rates. Now, in the short end of the market, our Fed uses a tool you've all heard of called the Fed Funds Rate. Right? The Fed sets the Fed funds rate. This is the interbank rate. This is the one-day rate of interest that banks pay each other to borrow money. It's the interbank rate. And during the pandemic, our Fed brought that interbank rate down to zero. Literally during the pandemic, the Fed could borrow, banks could borrow money for free. Well, starting last month, the Fed announced for the first time in years they're now going to start raising interest rates. So if you look at the yield curve, what I need you to understand in this module is the yield curve is dynamic, constantly shifting in shape and slope. By the way, my clients call this my yield curve dance. That short-term interest rates are subject to factors, most prevalently what the Fed is doing. And as the Fed is raising that one-day Fed funds rate, short-term interest rates here in the U.S. are rising accordingly. And our Fed has told us they expect to raise short-term interest rates six times between now and the end of the year. So it's not a question, are interest rates going up? They're going up. Short-term interest rates are going up because the Fed controls the short end of the market by manipulating this Fed funds rate. The long-term interest rates, the long end of the market, is affected by other factors like the prospect of inflation, like tapering that the Fed's going to be doing. 
So the point is the yield curve is constantly shifting in shape and slope, and it affects so many other asset categories like equities, like currency, like commodities, that really to understand interest rates is kind of the wind behind the sails of all of these markets. So even if you never trade a bond, it's important to understand this if you're involved in these other asset categories. So I know this was quick. Thank you for taking the time. We look forward to seeing you at the next session. Thank you.